Good morning, folks. We're still watching Proba 2 Swap with SDO being down. We've got updates on that, the next expected solar uptick, and it's going to be a bit of a different week here on the channel. Watching again with colors reversed to better pick out active regions and filaments here. No solar flares of significance right now. We did see a plasma filament destabilize on the north, but as the H-alpha from Gong shows us, it has collapsed rather than erupted. This is confirmed by the lack of hydro flare signature, which always does happen when they do release as CMEs. We have solar wind completely calmed back down now into normal range after an elevated stretch due to the previous coronal hole. Another stream is incoming this weekend as geomagnetism is settled into quiet conditions. And the coronal holes in focus for the weekend stream are seen in the GOES SUVI images here in the dark patches, one of which will almost certainly amplify the solar wind at Earth in the coming day or two. Folks, SDO being down due to the power outage at Stanford Data Center may continue a bit longer. Apparently, the Edgewood fire damaged the transmission line feeding PG&E power to the campus, and there's currently not a good timetable for its return. As you've seen the last three days, we don't exactly need it, but it is nice to have and we hope it comes back soon. Bepi Colombo shot of Mercury during its fifth of nine flybys here. More images are expected today with a huge release on Monday. And before you know it, the magnetic field data will be in telling us if there are any changes in Mercury's magnetism since Messenger flew by several years ago. Lastly, folks, a solid space weather study here of the biggest solar storms of cycle 23, and something we often mention here on the channel. The two super storms of that cycle occurred on November 20th, 2003, and then on November 8th, 2004. Folks, that is the 5.9 month cycle of activity right there. We have been mentioning it for a couple years, we've seen the papers, and the two biggest storms of cycle 23 being slightly less than one year apart are non-consecutive peaks of that 5.9 month cycle. This concept is how we predicted the uptick in activity earlier this year, and it means we're looking for the next peak starting in as little as a month. The lead-in and linger times are never the same from cycle to cycle, but the peak is expected mid to late August, with it beginning again as early as late July, and with the lingering uptick expected to go into September, if not late September. Been saying that for a couple of months, we've seen the dip in activity between peaks since then, and it's going to be over soon. That brings us to here. Hopefully you all caught our video several weeks ago about some of the changes to the channel. One of those is that we'll be doing more family time, more preparation time, more outside time with the children, and I'm so supremely confident that we are at least a few weeks away from the next major solar uptick that the next week will be almost like a vacation. I will be focusing almost exclusively on family stuff for the next eight to 10 days, which doesn't mean no videos here on YouTube. It means they may be late, like today. Some days may be skipped, especially if we're traveling with the little ones, which they deserve. Been here in the same city for too long and two of my three have never had a vacation. That hurts somewhere beneath the rib cage when I think about it. Anyway, link to that video is below. I kind of pour my heart out in it if you haven't seen it yet. Next week and a half is for my family. I will be here intermittently with the big updates, happenings, and science research. But for that time, please expect less from the channel and more from me as a dad. And expect the sun to wake up in about a month and a half. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll see you sporadically over the coming days. Right here, but right now it's 10 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.